Welcome to Lecture Online. Now let's take a look at part two of the same problem we did in the previous video. In the previous video, we had a hanging cable with a distributed load of 100 pounds per foot. We can approximate it as a situation where the shape of the, of the cable is going to be parabolic because there's enough tension on the cable so that the sag isn't very much. We also discovered that the tension in the horizontal direction was 25,000 pounds and the tension at the end point at B, and of course since there's perfect symmetry here, it would be the same at A, would be 25,500 pounds. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to calculate the angle the cable makes with the horizontal at the end point, and then what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the sag to just two feet to see how that actually changes the tension in the cable and the angle for the cable. First of all, we can see at the triangle here that theta is the angle between the tension at B and the tension at the center. So we can see here that we can probably use the tangent. We can say that theta is equal to the tangent arc tangent of course, that would be the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now when we plug in the numbers, let's see what we get. This is equal to the arc tangent of the load would be 5,000 pounds divided by the horizontal tension of 25,000 pounds. So basically we're taking the arc tangent of one-fifth. We need a calculator for that. So that's 0.2, take the arc tangent and we get 11.3 degrees. And that is a relatively small angle, as you can see that at 11.3 degrees, sine is about equal to the tangent, we can go ahead and assume that that is a parabolic shape. But what happens now when we reduce the sag to two feet? So instead of having five feet there, we now have a cable that has a lot more tension on it, in such a way that the sag now is reduced to two feet, and that section of cable is still has a length of 50 feet. Hmm. Well, the total load on that cable will still be exactly the same. The total load on the cable will still be 5,000 pounds. But what would now be the tension T sub naught? So what we're going to do is, again, like we did in the previous video, we're going to use the, the sum of the moment about point B is equal to zero. And let's la add up all the moments that we have. So first of all, again, we can take the load here that hasn't changed. That's equal to the load. It'll be a positive moment because it's counterclockwise times a distance of 25 feet. None of that has changed. It's still the load, 25 feet. But now we go minus T sub naught. And the distance now from the line of action of T sub naught instead of 5 feet is now reduced to 2 feet. And so this becomes 2. Solving that for T sub naught, we get T sub naught is equal to W times 25 divided by 2, which in this case, W is still 5,000 pounds, that's the total load, times 25 divided by 2. Hmm, that would be 62,500 pounds, 62,500 pounds. So see how that's now changed. When they have a sag of 5 feet, the tension was 25,000 pounds, but with a sag of only 2 feet, the tension has more than doubled, 2.5 times the original tension. Now let's also calculate T, and so T, just like before, is equal to the square root of T sub naught squared plus the load squared. This is equal to 62,500 pounds, we square that, plus 5,000 pounds, and you can see, of course, that the 5,000 pounds is very small compared to the 62,500. Okay, so we squared out plus 5,000 squared equals take the square root, and we end up with just about 62,700 pounds. So you can see what happens. As the sag diminishes, the tension in the cable increases tremendously. And of course, in a real situation, when you try to hang cable, cables from point to point, from pole to pole, let's say power cables or telephone cables, you don't want to reduce the sag too much, because when you do, then of course you increase the tension by a tremendous amount. If you have too much of a sag, then of course you lengthen the length of the cable, and with power cables you would have more resistance, and it would be more expensive because you would need more cable. 
And so there's a trade-off there. You want to find a nice happy medium between not having too much tension in the cable, so you have to make it much stronger, and not having too much sag in the cable because then you need too much cable and you have too much resistance in case of a power cable. So that gives you a pretty good idea of how to calculate that. Now the next thing we're going to do in part three, we're going to actually calculate the sag in the cable. So let's stay tuned and let's get, take a look at part three of this problem.